here's how to do a spin transition. In concept, it's very simple. All you're doing is keyframing the rotation, but if you only focus on the rotation, you're gonna end up with black bars in the side like this. So, in order to fill that black void with trendy transitionness, we're gonna do the same technique that all of these types of transitions implement. That is to replicate your clip and use the mirror effect multiple times in order to blend your edges. This clever technique allows you to extend out the real estate of your clip, thus allowing you to hide those edges when you do rotate the clip. There's two different ways I'm gonna show you how to achieve this effect inside Premiere Pro. The first is if you wanna save time, I'll show you how I'd apply it using my preset pack. And the second, I'm gonna build it from scratch so you can save it as a preset yourself and you can use it however you want to. So if I were to do this using my preset pack, I would take my first clip, create a cut, go to my second clip, create another cut, take both of those and duplicate them to the track above. Then I would go to my spin section inside my preset pack. And let's say I wanna do a counterclockwise spin. So I'd take my A above and A bottom because these are the first clips. And then I would take my spin counterclockwise B above and spin counterclockwise B bottom. Because of the motion blur, this does take processing power. I'll highlight both the clips, hit the question mark key. So I create my in and outs and then hit shift and return to pre-render that. And now I've created this counterclockwise spin transition in the matter of seconds. If you wanna preview some of the other spin transitions that I have inside my preset pack, here's a zoom spin and here is a corner spin. So it's spinning from this corner over here. There are eight different spins inside my preset pack and there's 70 different transitions overall. If you wanna check it out, it's in the description below, but let me show you how to do a spin transition building it yourself. The very first thing we need to address is to make sure that our sequence settings are the same. So if I go up here to sequence, sequence settings, right here, I'm time base 23.976 and frame size 3840 by 2160. If you are building a vertical, a square, a four by five or 16 by nine or any other aspect ratio, this will work on it once we save it as a preset. But for right now, we need to make sure that we're on the same page with the same frame size and time base. After you save this as a preset, you'll be able to apply this to any type of project. With that out of the way, I'm gonna hit okay. Now I'm gonna go down to new item create new item, adjustment layer. These all match the same settings I just told you and hit okay. Again, we wanna make sure we're on the same page. So I'm gonna right click this adjustment layer and go to speed duration, change the duration to one second and hit okay. So if I bring this down like this, I need to make sure that I'm exactly centered above the two clips. Well, if our adjustment layers are the same, they're both one second. And that means that it's 12 frames from the center point. So if I hold shift and hit the arrow key, two times, it will go 10 frames like that. And then I wanna go two more frames. So one, two, and move the adjustment layer like that. Now I know that my adjustment layer is exactly centered over the two clips. I'm gonna hit shift five to bring up my effects controls window. And then my effects window is over here. The first effect we're gonna look up is replicate. And the quickest way to apply effects is not to click and drag them onto the effect, but rather having your clip highlighted and then just double clicking the effect. As you can see, it has applied the effect over here. Change the count to three. And because we're doing this on adjustment layer, that affects both the clips. Now go back to your effects panel and look up mirror. We're gonna apply this four times. So I'll double click mirror. So it applies it four times. And first we're gonna adjust all of these reflection angles so we can get that seamless edge around our center frame. I've already covered this in depth in a previous tutorial. If you want to learn more about it, I'll link it right here. For right now, I want to go in intervals of 90 degrees. So zero, then 90, then 180, and 270. Again, this may seem super confusing at first, but once I do all of this, it'll make more sense. So I'm going to turn off all of these mirror effects except the top one. I'm going to pull my reflection center over from the right side and create that seamless seam on the right side. Looks like it's about 2559 toggle on the mirror below that. And I wanna create this on the bottom seam. So I'll pull down this mirror effect like that. Third one, we need to pull from the right side all the way over to our left seam. And our very last one will create the top seam. So if you need to, pause the video right here and copy these exact settings into your effects panel. Next, we're going to apply the transform effect. And here is where we can start rotating the clip. I'm gonna scale this up to 300. So it takes up the whole frame. And then I'm gonna to go to the first frame, 
go to the rotation and toggle on animation. Then I'm going to go to the second last frame, put in 360. So right now we have one full turn, but it's linear motion. We need to change that. So I'll do this little down arrow. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see what's happening. Highlight both of the keyframes, right click, ease in, right click, ease out. And now we have a spin like this, but I wanna make it look even better. So I'll move my playhead right here to the very middle so I can see where the middle is here in my editor. Click one of the keyframes and I'm gonna pull that in to the very center. I'm gonna take this one and pull it in to the very center like this. Make it a little bit bigger so we can see. Looks pretty good to me. And now we get a movement like this. Vroom. Vroom. So it starts slow, gets super quick, and slows back down into our ending. Now we need to add motion blur. Under shutter angle, I'm gonna type 180, and now we've applied motion blur. You could go all the way up to 360. I think that's a little too much. 180, I think, is a good happy medium between too much and too little. If this was the only time we would apply a spin transition, we'd be done. But if you want to take all of the work that you've done so far and be able to just apply that to any project, here is how you would create it as a preset that you could use with any aspect ratio and any duration. I'm gonna take this end keyframe and move it all the way to the end of the adjustment layer. Hold Command on Mac or Control on Windows and highlight every single effect right here from Replicate to Transform. Right click and hit Save Preset. And we're gonna name this Spin Clockwise. And underneath Type, we wanna make sure that it is Scale. This is the part where anytime you want the duration to change, all you would need to do is change the adjustment layer's duration and then apply the effect. If we did it to in or out, this would not be the case. So I wanna make sure that it's scale and in the description, I'm going to type hit that like button. Now, once I hit okay, if I go over to my effects, underneath presets, we have spin clockwise. I'll bring my adjustment layer above and let's say I want to change the duration to something shorter. All I need to do is go to the presets and here's my spin clockwise that we just made. Apply that to the adjustment layer, pre-render that. Now we have a quicker version of the spin transition. It automatically applied all of that material. Again, if I wanted this to be a very long transition, I'll make the adjustment layer super long, apply our spin clockwise, and now we have a much longer version of that spin transition. You can also apply this to any aspect ratio. So right here we have a vertical video. All you would need to do is make an adjustment layer that matches this sequence setting. So new item, adjustment layer. This is a 1080 by 1920 vertical video. Hit OK and bring that adjustment layer onto the track. Make it any duration you want to. Center it. Bring on your preset. Boom. And now we have a spin transition for the vertical video. If this video was helpful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. If you do want to check out my preset pack, again, that link is in the description. And until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.